Hey everybody, I am Hubert Porter for an East Creative Flow. This is uh, Ewan Jenkins from the last few lessons. We're here in his beautiful backyard and in this lesson we are going to go through the practicality of the twirling. How do you apply that? I've seen many questions on how do you apply these twirling strikes and keep flowing? One of the things with Filipino martial arts, if you see when we're striking, so for instance, if Ewan just attacks and I'm like going my, I'm doing all my movements and he keeps attacking and I just keep flowing, you're wondering how do you hit and then keep the flow going? A padded stick. With the padded stick, this will allow me to make a little bit of contact. I won't go too hard, but when you're practicing all of your flowing technique in drills, and we're doing one and four strikes, and we're obviously making contact on the stick. So in reality, for Filipino martial arts, we wouldn't be making contact on the stick because the nature of the art is to defang the snake, which is a common term used in some other arts. I've never heard it traditionally used in Filipino martial arts, but the, it's the same concept. And if you, know, you take the fangs out of the snake, then it can't attack you. It's a similar principle. If I can destroy the attacking weapon hand, which is holding the threat, then I don't necessarily need to go and do all this other physical damage unless the attacker keeps coming. So as he comes in, my target would be to hit his hand. Right? So I'd go, bam, and I'd whack his hand. And then if he kept coming, then I might come in and then attack the hand. Okay, now obviously he's again going slow. But if he came in at speed, I wouldn't necessarily go in. It's timing. You have to find your timing when to go in. So all of these attributes are combined. So like with twirling and making the twirling strikes effective, you have to find the timing when to use them. If I'm going to do a florete or a dublada or dublete, like a, a flowery type strike, I'm not just going to go in the air. Now when I'm doing a sayao or a form, then yes, I'll do it in the air. But in reality, if he came in with that strike, I'll do it there. That's wind up, one and follow through. But if he had two and he came in with the left, I might go one and then come back, two. So I'm applying the florete there and I'm always going to go with the flow. I don't just stop with two strikes. So the idea of making the florete or the dublada or the ridonda strike work is to find the timing when to do it because that's what it is. Because in reality, he's coming through with a fast strike. So how, I'm not going to just go in and attack and I'm not just going to go in and attack. I'll find the timing and I'll find the angle. And I might come out side because I know now that his strike is on that side, I'm on a good spot to come in and finish it if I want by coming in and finishing it that way. The application of the twirling strike, florete for instance, is if he comes in, I might go one and then do the second one there, right? Or it might be he comes in and I go one and then I come for the second one which would be there. So I'll be going one, two. Florete is like that and it doesn't look as beautiful when you're actually applying it. This looks smooth and you're right. How do you apply that? So he comes in again and I go one and then that's a two. So the timing is based off of his timing. If he comes in fast, I've got to be fast. If he comes in slow, then maybe I don't have to do the two strikes, right? Maybe I'll go one and then that one comes in and I'll do ridonda, a second circular strike. And that's how the art flows. You have to get hit sometimes, not at full speed, but you have to find that rhythm because everybody's will be different. Me going against Ewan will be different from me going against another person or another person. You have to find that timing and sparring with different people. So once again, I'm gonna do the florete and maybe the ridonda to show you how the twirling strikes work. You can come a little quicker if you want. So I have to go, right? So I have to, again, my twirling is not, it's not this. I'm not going that fast because in reality, I can't. I have to find the timing, keep going. Oh. And I'll do ridonda because my florete is not on the right angle. So I flow into the next technique. It'll always be different. And that's why you practice the accuracy. You practice the control. You don't worry about the speed. You don't worry about the power. That doesn't matter until you get the accuracy. Because if he feeds and I'm going all over the place and I'm missing, then what's the point <laughs> doing all these techniques if I'm not making contact? I have to be precise. If I can't do the twirling strikes at the beginning, then I do the basic strikes. So he comes in and I go boom. And I go, boom, right, so I'll come in. So that's how you apply the twirling strike. Florete, which means flower, and I did ridonda, which I believe means round. So once again, I'll go slower, he comes in, I go one, if he came again, I'd go two, and I'd go ridonda, right? If he goes a little faster, I'll find the timing, boom, boom. right? You can go faster even. 
Sorry. He said sorry, but it doesn't matter. You have to find the timing of when to come in and when to stay out. That's it for this lesson on how to apply the twirling strikes, how to flow from that broken rhythm and keep going. You may not get them the first time. They may come in, they may change the angle. So you have to learn how to deal with that. I'm Hubert Border for Anish Creative Flow. If you like this lesson, please give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, leave a comment or a question. I love getting feedback and I love to answer questions. If I can, I'll give you the best answer I've got. Thank you again and see you on the next one.